The Jones Act is the Merchant Marine Act of 1920. It's named after Wesley Jones, the senator from Washington, and he justified his legislation on the grounds that we needed better sea lift capacity and a shipbuilding capacity. The act comes into being as a direct result of World War I. In 1914, when the world goes to war, the United States finds itself in a very precarious situation. The U.S. does not have a large ocean-going merchant marine. And so the Merchant Marine Act of 1920 aims to ensure that the United States never finds itself in that position where in time of war or conflict, it's basically beholden to foreign nations for their merchant fleets. The Jones Act has many sections, many provisions, but the one that's most well known today is Section 27. Under Section 27 of the Jones Act, it requires that if you're going to move goods between two U.S. ports, that the vessel that moves it has to be built in the United States, it has to be registered in the United States, has to be owned by Americans, and at least 75% of the crew has to be American citizens. The idea here was to encourage the creation and foster the evolution of a robust shipbuilding industry. That's really not what we've seen as a result of the Jones Act foreign ships are not allowed to compete for business with, with the U.S. built ships. That means that the prices charged for these U.S. ships are very high, and the costs are high because there's just no competitive incentive to produce more efficiently. The cost of the Jones Act to the U.S. economy is a number that's been debated and been the subject of a lot of controversy over the years. The Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, estimates that the cost to the economy is about $64 billion a year, and that takes into account the effects on U.S. businesses that rely on transportation. This has to do with the shippers and those receiving the goods. They would like to see the lower costs, and the U.S. is a big proponent of that. We advocate free market, free trade, but in truth, throughout our history, we've always had this element of protecting the maritime industry. The first laws and regulations passed by the U.S. Congress were to protect U.S. ships and U.S. trade. Should vessels in the United States be able to be built with low interest loans, then you can offset some of those costs and you can bring down the cost to build U.S. vessels. The Jones Act has failed to live up to its original purpose, which was to ensure that we had a shipbuilding industry and that we had a ready reserve of merchant mariners and that we had a diversity of ships that could carry men and materiel to war zones and sites where there are national emergencies. During times of national crisis or emergency, there are allowances for what is known as a Jones Act waiver, where ships can come in and provide immediate relief and assistance to areas where there is not enough U.S. flagged vessels that meet the Jones Act requirement. We've had hurricanes and oil spills where foreign ships that were turned away because they were not Jones Act compliant, but they're the ones who have the technology, they're the ones who are better equipped to contain oil spills, to provide materiel for relief efforts in places like Puerto Rico during hurricanes. There are many factors that went into what happened in Puerto Rico. One of the first is it got hit by a massive hurricane which disrupted the internal transportation network in Puerto Rico. You can get goods into the port of San Juan. The difficulty was getting the goods out of the port of San Juan. And contingency should have been done to be able to move cargo around the island in a more efficient manner. That wasn't done. If we get rid of the Jones Act, or at least get rid of the build requirement, we will see many more ships sailing under the U.S. flag, owned by U.S. owners, crewed by U.S. staff, and we will likely see a renaissance in U.S. shipyards. The U.S. benefits from the Jones Act through several matters, and one of the ways that it benefits greatly is, of course, its ability to sustain its military forces overseas. By having its own transportation system, a system whereby goods can be moved on U.S. flag vessels, that makes the U.S. independent of foreign nations. If the United States decides to allow the Jones Act to be repealed, for most Americans, they will not see a difference. They'll be able to buy their goods with really no seamless change, but in time of conflict or national emergency, that's when the United States would see the impact of not having the Jones Act.